Welcome your wonderful faces to my hardcore world, where we've currently survived for over 500 days on a quest to build the biggest and the best fantasy world possible, starting with our Dwarven Empire where we've built some cosy little buildings at the very start of our series, such as a watchtower that is a cover up for our zombie spawner that we use to repair things, and our Dwarven Starter House which will be transformed into an epic storage area eventually for our automatic farms. But well, that said, let's jump into the video, but before we do, I would appreciate it if you could potentially consider hitting that sub button and liking the video as it really helps me out. That being said, let's get into it. Well, before we get to- what the heck is going on with my shield? What the heck? Oh, it's because it's not in the right hand. <laughs> yeah, I was just holding it up, I completely didn't realize. Let's get to work repairing our tools before we actually get into getting things done. So here we are, all we have to do is put our pickaxe in our offhand and sit here and just hit each zombie and they will die. Now that we've got fully repaired tools, we need to head back down into the mine so that we can try and get some more diamonds, because we're going to need a lot if we're going to duplicate both the upgrade tablet for netherite and duplicate the armor trim. Well, that wasn't actually a dreadful haul overall. I'm actually quite pleased with the outcome of that for mining for half an hour. But I've also realized that our armor is also pretty close to being destroyed. So we're going to get mending on the armor whilst we're here before going and repairing the pickaxe. So although mending is a bit expensive, we have got a one emerald silk book trade. So I think I will go ahead and disenchant the pickaxe and just try and see if we can get another enchant that is better. Now that we've got a f almost fully kitted out bookcase area, I'm hoping we can get a fortune three pickaxe. That's exactly what we're after. So we got exactly what we want. So now all we have to do is place down the ore. Now we just need to mine it up. And there we are, we've got nothing but, well, we got 41 gold and 43 diamonds. Not as good as I was kind of hoping, I was hoping it would be a little bit more, but that is going to give us a good boost. And now we can go ahead and try to make a pickaxe that will have a silk touch on it. So we'll have both a fortune pickaxe and a silk touch. I'm also going to build a diamond sword as well because... It is actually going to make just farming XP at our zombie farm just that little bit easier than hitting every single zombie. But it just feels more right, if you know what I mean. So back at the enchanting table, we just have to try and get efficiency 4 and unbreaking 3. Now all we have to do is just put silk touch book on there and we'll have that. Now unfortunately, this pickaxe hasn't been so lucky, so I'm kind of tempted... Uh, whilst we've got the XP levels to actually just disenchant this... Uh, once or twice. I don't want to get too caught up in it, but I think we can try and get a fortune with some better... Ah, uh, see, that's not too bad, but it's not quite as what we were hoping for. Let's try it one more time. Every single attempt we took at doing that, it got worse and worse. It's now only Unbreaking 3, and we're only on level 31, so I'm actually going to go ahead and just throw the last enchant on our sword. Sharpness 4, we have been really unlucky with these enchants. Let's go and just, whilst we're thinking about it, get Silk Touch. But before we do, I obviously very much forgot that we actually needed to get a bunch more emeralds, so I needed to come over to our farm. Now, back over to the villagers to sell up. Now, I think we're still a long way off actually managing to get mending on all of our gear and all of our tools because it's a lot more expensive, so let's head over to the watchtower. Well, there's only so much AFK and I can do back to the base to try and see if we can get a better pickaxe. Well, we got efficiency 3 and 14... Fortune 2, not great, but not terrible. At least it's got a level of fortune, so we'll get more than the base amount. So I think I'm going to turn my attention to blowing stuff up again. So we're back to getting some sand. Uh, 
And now we return to the base, grab half an inventory of gunpowder, where we need to then make some TNT, and then we need to rinse and repeat until we've used up all of the sand and all of the gunpowder. So we need to go ahead and block off this waterfall temporarily uh, so that the water doesn't stop the TNT from exploding. And then once we've done that, we can go around and play some TNT. But not before getting rid of the menaces of society. Come here. Be gone, foul beast. And I don't know if it is, so I'm just actually testing this, but is moss flammable? Uh, no, it's not. Anyway, moving on. So we've dug the area out, and I want to push this wall back just a little bit further. So we're going to use TNT to see how this goes. I'm assuming it's going to go terrible, but you never know. But there's nothing left to do but just to light it and see how this goes. Which I just want to say, by the way, I commented on the YouTube community tab the other day with a post. Uh... <laughs> and I asked you guys to guess just how well the previous TNT session was going to go. And it's come to my attention that so many of you have such little faith in me. And it's hilarious. Anyway, let's go and do it. Oi, run away. Swim away. I mean, your concerns are pretty warranted. I'll give you that. <laughs> What we actually need to move on next is to actually take this whole area down a couple of blocks. And I think I'm going to do it with TNT just to experiment. It's actually dawned upon me. We should probably test how far we can get away with spacing this out. So if we go ahead and start with the widest and try five blocks, this should in, rea in reaction, this should in theory create a chain reaction. And it did not. It does, however, turn out that you can have five spaces between TNT when it's on the surface. So in theory, this should help make the whole place go boom boom. Well, I accidentally left uh, the hole open and four of the villagers have turned into zombies. But that's fine because it's zombify them anyway. So now we can go ahead and do that. It should hit all of them. Annoyingly, I wish you also did this guy. That would have been very, very handy indeed. <laughs> Anyway, moving on, probably something else that I'm probably about to live to regret, but YOLO. Run away! Well, I got a little bit carried away, and we've actually just been uh, sort of leveling up these uh, villagers, and uh, we got a bit of wheat and things to sell to them. And I've actually gone ahead and managed to unlock some golden carrots. So we're going to go ahead and purchase them because they are considered some of the best food source in hardcore Minecraft. So we've now got that ticked off the list. We can continue. But first, in the previous world, I had made a, a cake for one of my Discord and Twitch moderators. And I'm going to go ahead and remake them. And these are going to go in our little memory area as we are going to be building a memorial hall that we can use to share our milestones and give thanks to the community on the live streams and things. But that's for another video. However, I am going to go ahead and get on with clearing this area because I really do want to get started on this city in this episode. So I'm going to time lapse it and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Punch it, Chewy! Well, we took a break from mining out the area to work on the watchtower in our live stream that we did over the weekend. But I just wanted to show you the little details that were kind of worked on over at the watchtower. But whilst I'm recovering from my illness and this migraine, I am just going to be taking it chill over the weekend. So I think we're going to get working on some more mining. It is now worth mentioning that we are probably going to be streaming going forward probably one day a week over on Twitch. So make sure you go down into the description, click on the Twitch link and go and hit up a follow over there because we are going to be doing projects over on the stream in this world that we probably won't be showing much of in the videos. Uh, so if you want to get involved and you want to learn to build with me and get better with building alongside myself, then you know where to go. 
Well, you certainly don't see that happen every day. Well, I wasn't expecting to get that when I was in the middle of mining, but hey-ho, that's another achievement ticked off the list. Well, despite the little intermission over in the watchtower, we're now back in the base where we're going to get to work on continuing to dig out this area. But first, we have to fill in this big pool that's generated, uh, which is thousands of solid water blocks so we're effectively gonna have to fill it in just to dig it out again so let's time lapse it and get to work Well, that wasn't a bad session, to be honest. We've still got a lot of hours left to put into digging out the rest of this area, leveling it all down, and then starting to carve out the entranceway to where the next segment of the city is going to be. However, during the process of doing all that, our armor took an absolute beating. It is almost destroyed, and we really don't have any diamonds left, so... There's two things we could do. I could either go mining for diamonds and repair it with diamonds, or we could actually just put mending on this armor and use the zombie spawner to actually get us back on track. And I think that's probably going to be the best thing to do long term, uh, since it means not mining anymore, because we've done a lot of mining today. So we're going to go ahead, dig up all of our wheat and replant it, and the potatoes, which normally takes us a short while. And then we'll go ahead and we'll trade them all in for emeralds. And that's most of the crops done. And we've got a lot of potatoes and wheat. So let's just go ahead and trade these up. Then we make some books, which should give us four. And hopefully we should have enough. We may need a few more, actually, now that I think about it. Then we buy three, and yes, so we need 15 more emeralds in order to buy our last mending book, so I'll be back in two seconds. And that should be enough wheat to give us 17 emeralds. There we are. We can now go ahead and trade this in for one more mending book. There we go. And then we can go and put this on our armor. Now let's head over to our zombie spawner and get this repaired. Well, I may have completely forgot to press record when I actually just about finished it, but we have now got mending on all of our armor and it's fully repaired. Anyway, we need to now get back to blowing up this area and because we've just basically got a lot to go still so let's go and grab some tnt and get on with it well we've placed a few stacks of tnt and oh hello <laughs> this is never going to end well we also discovered that the ravine which is just over here actually continues through and out of the mountain because if you aren't familiar this whole area is going to be a giant ravine which goes all the way down and then we're going to do like a cool little glass fade shadow effect uh, as it gets further down but let's go and light this tnt and try not to die <laughs> blowing tnt up will never not be fun in this game well once again i can only see this going so well eh? Eh? all right let's try this again well i didn't go too badly We are getting somewhere. It's looking very ugly at the moment, but don't worry, we are gonna go ahead and clean this up eventually. But first, we're actually gonna get to head time lapsing, digging out this particular platform here and just flattening this whole area so we can get a better sense of how the whole thing's gonna look when we're done.
Okay, so we're going to get to work on decorating the outside of our farming building, which is going to lead over to the start of our city, which we're going to start constructing very soon. But before we actually get to work, I was actually told the other day that you can actually make andesite. Correction, it was diorite that I was trying to make, because with diorite, you can then mix it with cobble to make andesite so yes we now have a use for the terrible stone that is diorite which i need to actually go around and clear out the base but we can turn it into actual useful building materials because andesite is a great way to add a bit of detail to stone as well as just build with it so we're going to go ahead and make a bunch of andesite walls because we're not going to over design this face all i want to do is just use some stone brick to kind of simulate the main supports that are kind of running through uh, throughout the building and then in between I want to add this kind of like chipped kind of carved stone look and I think andesite walls is going to be the best way to do that so first let's go ahead and go through and get all of these stone brick pillars put in place then we can go ahead and input all of the walls so first we need to jump down and get to work I uh, almost well I, I forgot to get the stone brick, so now we can get to work. Well, we've actually like got the foundations in place it's still got some detailing that we need to do but i think for now it'll give us the foundation to be able to move on because now we need to move our attention over to this why is there a rainbow under since when were rainbows underground <laughs> it must just be a little bit of a texture bug with the uh with the shaders but yeah, so now we need to move on and we need to decorate and build the trade district over here. Now, we're probably not going to be able to get the whole trade district set up in one particular video, but we can plan out and get the foundations in so that we can move the villagers that are over there over here and we can also get a villager breeder up and running and we can start making some progress on getting all the right enchants on our gear and making some gear progress so let's get to work planning all of this out well i've gone ahead and done a very basic plan i've gone ahead and built three preliminary buildings that we're going to build up in the next segment I've gone for this like big giant square building here, which is gonna a, a bit similar to how this one's hanging over a void. It's gonna hang over like a little hole over there, but it's gonna be built up and it's gonna kind of look naturally like built into like a natural stone column inside the cave. And then I've got this other smaller building here, which is going to go in. And then there's going to be a little staircase in here, which comes out on top. And there's going to be another smaller element of a building on here. And then we've got this octagon or what will be an octagon shaped building in the back there. However, I'm feeling like we might need to use a bit more TNT uh, to persuasively open up a bit more room. Okay, so we've got the basics of the city started. We need to get to work in detailing the area. And I think we're going to start by improving this step area to make it look like it's more natural stone that kind of just progresses up the side of the stony cliff. So now we move on to adding pillars like we've done over there, but on this building... So I've returned with a little bit of deep slate so that we can actually go ahead and make some deep slate fences uh, because I'm thinking that we'll do a very similar effect to what we did over there but just in a slightly reversed manner just to make it look 
a little bit different but also keep that consistency and add just a little bit of depth to these builds by adding in a bit of shading in and decoration so let's just carry on Well, I've also gone ahead and decorated this corner building. Now, this was supposed to be an octagon shape, but I think it's a little bit too small to kind of fully get the appreciation. But it's supposed to be like a rounded octagon dwarven building. I just wanted to add a bit of uh, variety in our city area. I didn't just want them all to be the same. Um, but we will be repeating these design patterns like throughout the build. Uh, but what I did for the windows was I used the same andesite wall kind of uh, border trick. But then to kind of like blend them into the stonework a little bit better, I've used some stone bricks uh, on the diagonal to help get rid of the gaps. And it just kind of helps blend them in, especially when you look at it from a distance. It doesn't look too bad. It actually looks quite cool. Uh, when you look at it in uh, the sort of retrospect of the whole scene. Still got a long way to go on the buildings. Um, so we're going to get this finished up. And then I'm going to actually go ahead and decorate this area with a few minecarts and things. Just to make it look lived in and make it look a bit active. So we're going to go ahead and time lapse this. And I'll be back in a second. And although I started this with the intention of populating the area. I actually decided in the moment that we were actually going to just generally work on the whole surroundings. I just felt like I wanted to do a little bit more terraforming before we actually did any detailing which I think I'm gonna leave for a future video however I did get to work on digging out the area we worked on the bridge that crosses from the farming building over to the start of the city by using some slabs and some stairs to make it look a bit more natural and more curved and we also turned our attention to adding in some mossy cobble because I've decided I really want to add that kind of luscious green feel to the cave like there's bits of moss growing around uh, in the places where the dwarves just aren't frequently visiting just to add a little bit more life and a little bit more colour and with that said I think it's time for the grand reveal Well, that wraps up the episode, and we've not managed to get done everything that I wanted to do, which is, you know, pretty typical of me. But what we have managed to do is get started on our Dwarven City, and it looks magnificent. It looks mint with shaders, and it looks even better, I imagine, when we turn down the brightness back to the default level, and we get the real grunginess of the Dwarven atmosphere coming through. But there's a lot left to do on making this look right. As you can see, we've started to add in some moss and some mossy cobble. I didn't want to just completely get rid of the grey, but I thought this would be a great way to kind of mix the stone in with some nature aspects. And we're going to be doing this all around the Dwarven Kingdom because I was inspired by the image on screen right now. But other than that, it's, I've had a fantastic two weeks making this video. Unfortunately, we, this video was pushed back last weekend because of the migraine. But we can get on and move forward and hopefully we won't be having any more migraines for a short time because they only come occasionally. Um, but other than that, I want to thank you so much as we've recently hit 6k subs. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that sub button as I would love to see if we could smash 10,000 individual dwarves in our clan. But other than that, I want you to also know that using TNT to blow this place up has been a fun experience. But I've also discovered that TNT is absolutely sh- And I've been the Mike James, also known as me, Mickey T, and I'll see you guys in the next one.